Okay. Yep. So, welcome one and all. Uh, today in this session of Robotic Talks, we have with us Dr. Zingi Dennis Da, a general manager at Xpeng Robotics, where he currently leads the control center that respond that uh, responds to balance control and reinforcement learning. Zingi got his doctorate in mechanical engineering from the University of Michigan, where he worked on bipedal locomotion and nonlinear control. Before joining Xpeng Robotics, he was a robotics research and development engineer at Nvidia A Research Santa Clara CA. His research involved uh, legged robot control, trajectory op optimization, and more importantly, sim to real transfer of reinforcement learning based techniques. So, personally, the earliest memory of Zinge's work that I have uh, was the feedback control of uh, on Cassie. So, we saw the biped balancing itself, and not just that, it was driving a Segway. It was very impressive. And in fact, it was a uh, motivation for us to uh, build our in house project, Jerbot, at ITBHU. So, yes. without further ado, to discuss his exciting research and walk us through the emerging field of legged robotics, I now call upon Zingye. So, yeah, the stage is yours. Yeah, thanks, uh, uh, Lo Lokish. And um, uh, yeah, it's uh, my pleasure to, to talk to you, all you guys. Um, yeah, so so today we're talking about uh, half of work is about uh, uh, bipedal work, especially um, the, well, same to real trick or is actually the real to real trick like i start my phd on uh, well these four robots on the um uh, first page is the, the robot have been worked on so i start work on the marlow um and then cassie this phd in michigan then like i go uh, in nvidia and then finally um the uh, unicorn uh, in x pound robotics um all right, so let's enter the um, first part is um, what can uh, what I have done on, on Marlow and uh, uh, what we can transfer this knowledge uh, to Cassie when I about graduate and head over to um, the new student. Um, OK, um, so so on Marlow, we do uh, a lot of work. Um, for this um, a wave field uh, video, uh, let's see. So like we, we first uh, tested it in internally uh, and I, I built this um, <coughs> kind of like the, the wave field uh, indoor and then we let the, the, the uh, robots uh, walk over it. So it's so always nice, uh, unstable boards, some foam, and the next uh, steer, so, so you can uh, walk over it. Um, Marlow is pretty hard to control because of the degree of freedom. It's uh, very low. It only has six motors, so three motors uh, on one side. So it has this knee and this rear knee and a hip motor. Uh, so it's very hard to control the turn. Uh, that's why we have this um uh, like a straight uh, uh, leg like a two-point contact leg uh, to prevent its turning but actually the, the uh, marlow is uh, very uh, hard to uh, turn uh, so we do this perturbation test as well um just to to uh, check the, the robustness so i uh, this is some um, supervised learning approach. Uh, so I train multiple um, uh, optimization trajectory and the kind of like put them as a big library. So the robots will select uh, the proper motion based on the current uh, state. Um, so I can do a large push and what about even harder? Um, so at this point it's Feel like so the robots is impossible to fall over, and uh, the, if for, for for this um, a forward direction kick, um, so the the robots will do kind of like the optimal behavior, like the best of, of the best, um, because it's running the optimization and um, uh, do everything to minimize. Um, uh, the recovery speed and uh, uh, the velocity. So the last part is just uh, like an emergency stop uh, triggers on safety state. But not necessary. Uh, the robots fall over. Um, so given all this indoor test, it's still uh, super hard to get the robots uh, run on the wave field. Um, 
So that's some, something we have done uh, next. Um, but you can see like the we feel we, we eventually um, success on, on it. But um, uh, those um, even terrain and uh, those like the um, us, um, like a random shade for this outdoor terrain make it just uh, super hard uh, to walk over. And uh, here you can, and a lot of error because of the hardware failure. If you watch here, it's like fall or leg break or leg break fall. Uh, here is actually leg break first. See, uh, then it's fall over. Uh, so there's a lot of like hardware issue um, on this case. Um, let's see. I think I have a one for. Uh, the wave field, just bear me a second. Um, ah, this one. So eventually, given all this uh, hard time work on the Marlow, um, finally we, we make it happen, given some on tweak for the gate library and the lateral, like the side to side, stability uh, we eventually can make some marlow uh, walk over a uh, walk through uh, the valley of the way feel but as you can see it's still not very um, stable ground um, and uh, the robots uh, once walk forward it's uh, starting drifting like the turning and the the, the mar marlow is very hard to control uh, the turn um, so I decide for the last half of a part, just make it walk side way. And um, you can see this diagonal uh, diamond shape of the leg. Um, actually, walk sideways even harder uh, because the legs um, for, for the, this um, mechanism limitation is hard to cross over. Um, so, but we, we still manage to go through all the way uh, to the end of this valley and the coming back uh, without any uh, safety help. Uh, the, the final cut is just to show uh, the limitation uh, for the robot and the point out for the uh, next uh, working direction. Um, because Marlow is walking blindly, no vision. Uh, so if you just step into a big hole, um, there's no way you can uh, make it recover. So this is what triggers our uh, next work. Um, about how um, Marlow, um, <clears throat> like the, uh, with the vision, uh, can can improve on top of it. Um, okay, so the point for this uh, Marlow's uh, work is say, okay, this is work or done like five years old, um, and um, how do we transfer? Um, the technology um, to Cassie. So, so I've done a lot of uh, tuning and um, um, especially like some uh, Cassie has a uh, very uh, light torso. Um, so so th there's a lot of change um, and what we need to do. Um, and um, we, we do, do this uh, real robot to real robots technology transfer very quick. Uh, like in uh, the three week and uh, usually uh, by comparison um, we have a few other labs against CASI almost the same time as we did. Uh, it takes them about a year or even more um, to make CASI to do a stable walk and uh, we, we, we just do a uh, three day and uh, we, we in, after um, well, three week and um, um, Plus three a day after we can do all kind of like the outdoor walking. Um, so I, I think there's a lot of like a knowledge uh, passing in the lab, um, and uh, um, there's a lot of a lot of like a, um, a real robots trick. Like we realize the uh, Cassie torso is too light, so we change some. Um, Output like uh, we we change some, some joint angle uh, as a reference to to make his walk. Uh, I think that that's one of the uh, main trick uh, we did. Um, the work work here is um, 
we trying the the philosophy here is when we uh, design a controller is we're trying to design something uh, simple first. Um, so so this controller even is uh, walking forwards with um, slope like um, I think it's a eight degree, uh, not 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 very stiff, uh, but still a reasonable slope. Um, the robot even you see it's walk forward looks fine, but actually this is a controller uh, for stepping place. Um, but we just uh, fake the center mass um, on position to um, uh, say say you to detail this forwards. So, so it's actually uh, the robots drifting forward when not necessary design any um, walking gates uh, for the forward walking. So it's kind of walk slow, but it's reasonably um, stable. So we, we start with uh, this uh, robot to robot transfer um, data and uh, also like to pass my knowledge to the young generation of um, the, the, the PhD student, uh, Yu Kai Gong. Um, the next step is um, how do we design a better controller uh, on, on CASI, uh, given the knowledge um, from, from Marlow. Um, so there's be a uh, sounds uh, interesting um, design case we call the gate library methods. And uh, we, I can I give some intuition on why this is a good strategy. Um, so a gate, we talk about this like a periodic motion for a constant speed. Uh, that's what we call a gate. Um, and you can design a controller to stabilize the gate, meaning uh, given this periodic motion, you push it, so you can recover from this orbit. Um, so it's kind of like um, attractive to this uh, local point. Um, and the gate library, you, you can kind of like design or sort of uh, a set um, of, of different motion, like so walking backwards, uh, walking stay um, in place, and then walk, walk back, uh, walk forward. Um, so, so you can design all the orbits, um, and uh, you can design a controller for all of the orbit. Um, but the, the point is, um, if, um, I think I may skip this uh, part more intuitive answer is if we trying to stitch all the library together as that's the robot's velocity to select um, the trajectory um, you'll notice like all of them we just select the current velocity uh, as the library so if we actually connect all this uh, local minimum together, uh, then they become a flat, uh, very flat line, not, not uh, attractive, but not also not uh, unstable. So, so it's just, we call this neutrally stable. Um, so if you imagine um, like a mass or a ball on a frictionless surface, uh, when you push it, uh, you will change the speed, right? Uh, but if there's no force, it will just uh, stay at that speed forever. So, so the, 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 the ball will not slow down or not accelerate, it just keeps the speed. So it's like um, Newton's uh, 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 first law. Um, so we kind of have the same thing for the robot. So, so you just push it, then, then coming back. Um, so, so it will stay here forever until you give another push. Um, so it's a very good uh, control strategy. You are not necessarily uh, stable it, but um, you just you, it, it can be very um, uh, naturally ha have this uh, very natural uh, motion. Um, so it's really like a ball on a <coughs> frictionless um, surface. I would call this neutrally stable. Uh, well, you can have some mass um, to um, define um, the neutrally uh, stable as well. Um, but uh, um, can some extra hint. Um, so we're not 
only want this neutral stable. We we actually want it really stable, so we can add the extra some delta modification, as we call the full placement, to to make it actually stable. Um, so given this two uh strategy, uh, so so we have this gate library and the plus full placement, um, then uh the CASI become a very stable um uh, controller. Oh, <clears throat> right. So, so <clears throat> we got this uh, Cassie walking um, over all kinds of uh, terrain. Um, I can make us walk over terrain. And then, so, yeah. Th this way, because we design the gate uh, for different surface, um, <clears throat> you, you can walk much faster than the one we just uh, designed for stepping place. And you can walk on the grass, uh, no problem. Uh, slow, uh, that's also fine. Um, and, and, and on the sand, so um, it's a soft contact, and we can that is where the shoes, so it doesn't sink in the sand. Um, all of them, we don't change the control at, at all. Uh, it's a show uh, we have a very robust uh, controller, and uh, there's a control burn um, uh, near the um, campus. So it's a, supposed to be a um, search and a rescue robot. Uh, so the, you should handle that um, and to some, some uh, expect a slipping. Um, uh, standing, sure. Um, just sit and uh, stand. Uh, um, and then do this um, like balancing. Um, and I mean, if you can stand, then, then you can uh, walk a segue. Um, that, that's um, well, I, I propose it, and uh, you can make it happen. Uh, this uh, the, the human driver is a younger. Um, so basically, you you just shift your center mass uh, and uh, to to control the segue. Uh, so pretty pretty uh, interesting, and uh, yeah, Tarot has a very nice balance. And uh, uh, watch this is actually can uh, shifts the uh, center mass weights to uh, make the uh, Cassie turn. And we'll make the segue turn. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, oops. Or for this part. Uh, let's see. Okay. Um, for for the time sake, I'm happy to answer any question for, for the bipad, but I'm going to show uh, the next. Um, parts of the talk is about the quadruped uh, reinforcement learning and the control. Um, also, like the show some vision how how we can improve the reinforcement learning part. Um, so, and this work is done on, on like ago. Um, so, uh, we the, the reinforcement learning really break down to uh, two uh, categories. We have this end-to-end -end learning or we have those uh, hierarchical um, con control strategy. Uh, the end-to-end -end learning is this way. Um, so we have a joint PD control. Uh, the reinforcement learning is to uh, send the joint position command. So, so it's really a position command. Um, but it will not directly send the joints command. It will provide some reference uh, joint angle. Um, so uh, the reinforcement learning just make a modification on top of it. Uh, that's uh, the usually how, how people do that. Um, so you, you basically you have a reinforcement learning run like 100 hertz. Uh, so um, it, it, it has some, some good side or bad side. Good, good side. There's tons of the next, uh, good work coming out from this strategy. And um, uh, the bad side, one thing is you do the position control. Um, and uh, the position control, you you, you have uh, limited bandwidth, meaning um, your leg is really act like a spring. Uh, if too soft, uh, you don't get any, um, well, most of your controllability. If it's too hard, it's bad for the contact. Um, and uh, our, our controller is 
I'll put the joints uh, position, so just hard to understand. And uh, there will be some, some hard-coded uh, reference trajectory. Um, it's hard, hard to change. For example, if you do the trotting gait, uh, you will always have the trotting gait. Uh, you, it's hard to change uh, to something else. Um, there's another um, control method I will propose, uh, and I, I prefer, is we have a, a model-based controller or QP controller uh, direct output the torque, um, and the RL planner do uh, even some higher decision. Um, so this way, the RL planner can run a much uh, slower uh, uh, speed, um, and um, it don't worry about the stability at all. Um, the QP uh, optimization based controller will take care of uh, everything. A uh, good thing is it's a high level strategy. Um, and the QP is pretty reliable. We have all this um, MIT uh, Cheetahs work based on this or some extended version. Um, and the high level controller, um, we can clearly understand what's the output with some physical meaning. Um, and uh, yeah, it's much easier to do the same to real transfer. Um, so, because I, I, I have tried both. So, I, I think I, it's fair to say that. Um, well, th this is something like um, the project uh, I, I do in NVIDIA. So, we have this QP controller. And then the planner, our planner will output the uh, contact sequence, central mass state, and uh, the robot uh, foot position. Um, so, so or, or, or three kind of output. Um, when not necessary, um, they're all of them at once uh, at the very beginning. So some parts, like the black parts, can be from some heuristic controller, and uh, the green part is. Um, the reinforcement learning controller, uh, the training setups. We have like the PPO and the build this uh, in a training environment. Um, and the task, like the, we can train different things, right? Like the, for the first phase, uh, we just train the contact sequence. Uh, later on, we can train um, contact frequency. Uh, there's one thing missing, center mass state and the full location. So we can train actually everything um, using this method. Um, and we tested um, a treadmill um, um, e e example. Uh, the unique thing about the treadmill is we actually have the two bell uh, um, and they, they, they can run uh, independently. Um, so I'm going to show uh, you how, how this actually work. Um, so we learn the contact sequence. So if one side of the treadmill uh, move, uh, the robot will just move that side of uh, the leg to uh, minimize the energy. Uh, that's so the cost is, well, we, can, we can change the treadmill speed and the robot's orientation. And they're trying to minimize uh, the energy and then let the robot stay on the ground. Um, so th this is some behavior you rarely see um, on the robot, but you 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 think this is intuitive um, behavior. And if um, uh, your pet's dog or cat work on this treadmill, um, they're supposed to do the same thing. Um, so the control strategies we have a uh, different contact primitive we have a nine of them so like the stand trot trot with the left leg or, or the, the right pair of the leg um all of the contact sequence uh, we have this high level controller um to select uh, one uh, from, from one from, from this nine primitive and then we have a low level controller uh, to uh, generate the torque um, so well, more more intuitive, you can see there's a table for uh, nine uh, contact primitives, and uh, when the robot um, stands, it just uses a stand primitive. Um, the, when the robot walks slowly, it will use all kinds of uh, different primitive, like um, a step, pace, trots, any kind to, to stay balanced. 
um, so not necessary for follow one specific pattern buffer or use all different kind of uh, context um, primitive. And uh, oops, I feel like I missed one. Um, okay. But anyway, um, if you if the robots uh, run fast, most likely you will just use this charting gate. So this is charting gate you, you see uh, apply for most of the robots, uh, uh, most of the quadruped. Um, then we have the baseline that always uses charting gate and this R controller. So so for normal walking, they, they are no different. And now I pass a bridge uh, on this robot. Um, so you, so you, you'll see um, the trot baseline still do the trotting gate with a much higher energy use as this uh, learning gate because it only just moves the rear two leg instead of uh, <coughs> all, 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 all the leg. Um, so this is a more uh, intuitive way of uh, walking. Mm. Also, we can um, do this banana peel test. So if you do the trotting gates, uh, you always do the trot and uh, it, it, it can slip and uh, cause the robots unstable. Uh, um, and if we compare this RL controller, uh, you'll not do, do very aggressive motion or just uh, reset uh, this slip leg. Uh, so so uh, in some scenario, it's more stable. Um, sometimes it's more the rear leg um, the, for first for some balancing reason or maybe just the reward function we didn't do it well. Uh, but you got the idea. Um, well, there's some seem to real um, transfer, um, but I, I, I think just given uh, COVID-19 and some, some um, uh, limitation, um, it's a very minimum test, but you can still say next like, so for, for the middle speed is to trot, step, uh, trot, step, and the stance. So, so with a different combination. And for, for faster walking, mainly just do this uh, trotting gait, sometimes a step well, as well. Okay, and uh, what else? Um, yeah, so, so overall with this uh, high level RL plus uh, low level uh, Q model based um, QP controller. QP is quadratic programming, a uh, um, convex optimization strategy. Uh, we can get a versatile, robust, efficient gate and uh, very easy to do the same to real transfer. Uh, okay, um, I want to give an update for more recent results. So uh, this one, we not only just learn the contact sequence, we actually learn everything. Um, and I want to convince you say uh, it's actually worse to learn um, all of them. Um, and they could uh, give a more, um, <clears throat> well, uh, intuitive, energy efficient, robust result if, if we learn uh, all, all of them. Um, so then there's a table, right? Um, three different uh, three action. Uh, heuristic is just, um, all of them is based on the heuristic, nothing learned, and the policy one, two, three is we can learn uh, different kind of stuff. Um, let's see. Uh, first, the heuristic actually very good. Uh, it's not like we're trying to um, defy some like a <clears throat> very bad baseline in comparison. So, so uh, this heuristic, if we just have the normal rough terrain, it can work. It's uh, very very good. Uh, we have this um, local high map. It actually uses local high maps to, to detect the terrain and the heuristic will know how to um, select the full location and the height uh, based on this high map. Um, so according to that, uh, rough, continually uh, rough terrain heuristic controller is uh, very good. So, so you can use it for anything. Uh, but not necessarily it's good uh, for the uh, stepping stone scenario. Uh, the best thing for the heuristic is um, the center mass control is from a very simple uh, PD controller. 
Um, <clears throat> it doesn't coordinate very well uh, with the full location. So um, this, so you can see it's like oscillated a lot. Um, because like you, you need you really want to put your central mass right on top of your uh, support leg of the line along the support leg, so so you don't uh, fall over to to e either side. Um, but the heuristic that doesn't do that at all. So so it's sometimes you can walk it, but uh, usually it's all fall over after a few steps. Mm. Um, and we start to know uh, the center mass target. So the learning policy will know how to uh, change the center mass acceleration. Then you could change the center mass position to let us coordinate with the foot location. Um, just with this um, one thing change, um, and the, the robots walk more stable. So you see there's a no uh, side to side uh, motion, right? Uh, so they just walk straight over the stepping stone with various height. Um, and then can walk actually all along uh, to the edge uh, with very comfortable gates, a very stable um, um, body mass, uh, well, but, but body um, uh, velocity. Um, really any like a side to side motion um so so that, that that's just one thing change and uh, totally worthwhile uh to use a learning uh to to uh, learn this one because if using any like model based control is very hard um but it, it doesn't mean that you can do uh, well. It kind of can do everything, but uh, uh, not very intuitive way. Uh, for example, if we change the speed, right? So every time you're just trying to do this uh, uh, stepping or uh, keep moving the skate, uh, doesn't very intuitive. Like just uh, keep stepping. You you expect say, hey, just stop, just just stand there. And even like a slow motion is still do like the leg motion is too quick. And you can imagine in the real time, um, this can cause a lot of like uncertainty and um, can potentially cause some like a stability issue. Uh, that's why we have uh, the second policy. Uh, we learn the contact sequence and uh, acceleration together. Um, so. This is not a steel, this is just a robot stand. Okay, uh, the robot just stand there, and uh, when I have a command, so say it's walk forward, and walk forward. Uh, no command, just uh, just stop. Uh, um, this is much more intuitive way um, to uh, control the robot. So just very well uh, step, uh, st and the first slow speed, it will tell the body first, uh, then move the leg. That doesn't move as fast, not, not at all, um, the frequency for the previous controller. It mostly moves the foot when it's necessary. Um, and they can stop. And uh, if the high speed, just do this normal trotting gait. Uh, but the point is at the low speed or can stop. Uh, the stop in a proper manner, uh, so this transition. It's handled pretty well, and the low speed. This is a more reasonable gait, like the cautious walking gait. So yeah, I, I'll say this is a, a, a much better one, and um, well, you can try different gates if you say, "Hey, I'm actually with much wider terrain, so I probably don't want to do the trotting. I can do this kind of like a bounding gait." Um, that's possible as well. Um, so that, that's a benefit uh, for this one. Um, the thing I haven't done is know the foot targets um, to, uh, this is still in progress. I will, will, will uh, have some student work on this as well. Um, I hope that that will come with the best um, um, policy um, based on this trend. Like, um, the adding more thing in, in learning is showing the better result. Okay, um, here I
basically want to point out, uh, even given all this result, there's a tons of things uh, we can improve, like different sensor, uh, different tests, different uh, contact planner, and uh, different control algorithm. Um, but one thing is bad is uh, the training speed. Uh, because this is optimization based controller take take time to run and uh, uh, for for CPU based controller it's very hard uh, to run this uh, type of uh, training very fast. Um, so in Nvidia like we propose everything should run on GPU um, that, that's uh, we can make things fast. Um, we have this Isaac Jim. Um, simulator or that can allow you to run everything um, on GPU. Um, and then we have some paper and the show um, it actually can reduce the time uh, significantly. Uh, usually they train something on animal uh, in three days. Now I can train on animal like 20 minutes. Um, so it's a uh, much faster um, and uh, I have a uh, very strong believe like so the, 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 the training speed is gonna shrink so much faster than the more law. Um, I, 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 yeah, I, I think that the the, the, the training uh, reinforcement learning will have a big contribution on the uh, like a locomotion. Um, this is a summary for into a learning pacing gate uh, virtual based locomotion. Um, then some. Um, other work uh, like so auto navigation, um, bungle board balancing, which is the first project I have done uh, in NVIDIA, and uh, uh, skateboarding. Um, very uh, preliminary results extension to this uh, neural contact sequence that kind, kind of work. Um, okay, uh, finally, I just joined. Um, this uh, Xpon Robotics um, in two months, and we are this, uh, creating control uh, this uh, robust unicorn. Mm. Uh, the idea is we can allow some kids uh, to, to ride it, so, so it's like a robot horse or a robot pony or, or the unicorn um, can, can have the weight around 30 kilograms and we have uh, um, and uh, so so, so uh, kids can, can ride this as a transport or it's really an off-road vehicle. Uh, I have a, a video for, for this one. Yeah, I just want to point out. Um, even uh, most of them are the uh, CGI animation. Uh, the last few seconds, uh, starting from here, uh, this is actually the real robot. Uh, this is not the uh, animation. This is a robot prototype. Uh, so, so we actually make the robot, oh, but still in you know, a prototype phase. Uh, but uh, something unique is uh, we do this uh, kind of uh, strainy uh, walking. Um, the, the it's more elegant, uh, but uh, close to the singularity. So, so that's a unique challenge uh, with this one. All right. Um, I think I'm done with the talk. And, uh, happy to take any question. Uh, great. Yeah, uh, thanks a lot, Dennis. It was quite, uh, you know, interesting and exciting to see the overall <laughs> journey. The, yeah. uh, I've just uh, written a page full of questions, to be very honest. Oh, but, wow. uh, <laughs> okay. Let me start <laughs> yeah, from yeah. the audience. 
Uh-huh. So we have one question from Surabit. So he is asking, uh, why is this wheeled support there? Uh, is it because the motor couldn't hold the weight of the controller, couldn't react fast enough, and the robot falls in the time it takes for the next leg to come in place? So Surabit, I think this question would be better if you can unmute yourself and ask because I think it's lacking context in regard to which experiment. So uh-huh. are you there, Surabit? Probably you can ask it live now. Yes, sir. Yeah. So uh, in Hello, Dennis. In the starting, you showed the uh, some of the beginning uh, the photos and videos of Cassie there. Uh, when you took it outside, then you uh, used a, a steel frame in, uh, from which you suspended it. Yeah, right where your cursor is pointing. So, uh-huh. uh, like we also uh, faced this problem in Jerboat. Like our problem was that it uh, couldn't uh, be very stable when it was walking. So we uh, to augment the support, we used this thing. So why were you using it? Like it was some motor problem, like motor couldn't hold it in the initial stage, or it was some control problem, like it couldn't react fast enough. Or why? Uh, you mean why we uh, use this um, kind of like a mobile gantry uh, to uh, to support? Right. Uh, well, this is just for safety. If you see like the, the, this cable, it's uh, it's a uh, very loose, uh, so so we don't. Uh, well, this is just safety, just in case it's falling down. Um, but we don't uh, actually attach the robots uh, on on this uh, on on this gantry. So all the time, uh, the cable is actually loose. Um, yeah, this is just 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 like a safety cable. Uh, Okay, thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because this is actually the first experiment, and we have this. Uh, let's call it the sound sound news reporter trying to feel um, the the robot, so, so we don't want to break 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 it. Uh, but but the last time, uh, next time you see there's a walk on the grass, so so we just detach it. Uh, and uh, yeah, because falling on the gr- uh, grass, it's it's okay. Okay, so I don't see any other question in the chat box. So guys, feel free to unmute yourself. At least raise your hand first, so that uh-huh. you can then unmute and uh, probably ask your question. Okay, so by the time the next question pops up, I'll just quickly shoot one of mine. Uh-huh. Uh, so yeah, starting with this work in Cassie or Marlowe, right? Uh, Renee, yeah. you pointed out that you were treating it as more or less a point foot, and there was no contact modeling for an ang- feet or something. And even if there were, it was a passive joint right right, right, right. so uh, like if you see the humanoid literature or even the recent work with uh, boston dynamics that is right mm-hmm. they heavily rely on the ankle control uh-huh. so uh, what is your take so it might be restrictive so that mm-hmm. is what uh, i am but what exactly is your uh, point there is you know is it restrictive or ankle is required so mm-hmm. yeah yeah, um, I, I think we, we, we uh, can uh, talk, talk about uh, where, where the stability come from, uh, from uh, of the robot, right? Um, so so it's come from uh, in two ways. It's one is on the swing foot, like if you put this to the proper position, so it's what, like the pendulum, so, so it will decelerate the robot, and that, that's why it um, can stop. Uh, so that that's a strategy Reaper used for its 1D hopper, or we use this for the point feet. Um, another one is come from uh, the stance foot, uh, especially uh, for this um, ankle. You can use it uh, to slow or uh, accelerate um, the um, yeah to to change the speed. Um, for all our work, we don't use that. Uh, I guess one reason is uh, the torque is too small. Um, it's just the motor is not very powerful. So, so it's really um, help uh, if we have a larger feet or more powerful um, um, <clears throat> for, for ankle, uh, we might use it. And then I think you are right, uh, Boston Dynamic, even like a human, um, around 30% of the power is actually come from the ankle. Uh, and uh, I uh, strongly believe uh, that will be um, a very good strategy uh, to use ankle um, in, in the control. And uh, the hard thing for uh, this 3D robot, like the robot can, can fall sideways and uh, for forward backwards, is if we have ankle, uh, the forward backwards stability should be very good. 
uh, then we just focus on the side to side motion uh, using the full placement strategy. Uh, I think once we break down, because this is like you, you have two pendulum, right? Like coupled together, uh, that's very hard. But if we can just focus on the side to side pendulum, uh, that, 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 that will um, make the control much easier and a more, more robust controller. Yeah, and, and another uh, stability come from like uh, the torso uh, rotation. Uh, Cassie just don't have a large uh, torso, so digits is actually a much better robot. So you can use your arm and your torso to, to do the balancing. OK, great. So anyone else? Any other questions? Oh, see your hands rise. Yeah, Rago, uh, please do go ahead. Yeah, so like uh, in your end to end learning reinforcement, like RL based learning, can you shed some light on like uh, what was the reward that you use for different policies for learning different things and what were your in states and what kind of initial policy, uh, initial seeding policies were used? So make sure that it does not get stuck in a local minimum or something. Oh. Like also you asked about this uh, end to end work, right? Um, I, 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 I think for the end to end, uh, we, we, we have this paper uh, for um, a few reasons, like uh, this end to end work. Um, so we do this work as a direct answer to um, the Google Brain. There's an imitation learning uh, paper. It's trying to, uh, unlike a go to mimic some a dog with this motion capture data. And uh, they say it's very hard to do the same to real transfer. And uh, they add a lot of the tricks to do this same to real. And uh, we say, <coughs> um, Maybe there's a, a few um, parameter like the decision variable. If you set it correct, uh, that makes it much easier to do the same to real transfer. Um, so for us, the uh, reward function is very simple. It's something like the <coughs> reward to um, um, stable, like the penalize the velocity and uh, to um, uh, have the reward to track the center mass speed. So, so not no no any uh, tricky stuff uh, to 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 encourage it uh, for for anything to real. And we don't do any domain randomization, like that. set some noise uh, on, on the joints to to improve the same to real. Um, the decision variable we think is very important is you said the low PD gain. Um, so, so I, <clears throat> I show um, here this PD gain. Um, so you, you, you need to set this low and uh, this, um, so, so I, I mean this paper, uh, they, they do, do a good, good job, uh, but they, they set a super high PD gain. So the idea is I need to track the uh, trajectory perfectly. So this might help for the same to real. And we say, uh, don't, don't, don't worry about this tracking error. Uh, if you have a low PD gain, uh, you're likely to have a, a low impulse, like, because your leg has a very uncertain uh, when to contact. And when you contact, if you're soft, so it's like a spring damper. So, so you reduce this impulse and uh, reduce the uh, center mass velocity uh, perturbation. And we find uh, just change that parameter uh, seem to real uh, is very easy. And uh, but if you know how to do the domain randomization or you know there definitely some noise, then go ahead to, to randomize. Uh, but just don't don't do the random randomization. It's not necessary, and the could could uh, makes your performance worse. Uh. Okay, uh, so one quick question, uh, Dennis. So in the first work, you showed the uh, neutral uh, equilibrium idea for the gate yes. transition, right? Right. So right. yeah, so this was uh, really interesting, and especially when you see periodic orbits like this, this makes perfect sense to me. Yeah. But when you think about uh, you know even gates of different phase, let's say hopping or jumping, or let's say 
more mm-hmm. uh, ag- aggressive maneuvers like aperiodic motions right, so right. do you have any points to scale up this technique there or uh, do you have a totally different approach out there uh you tap on next on this jumping or those motion um maybe um when you think uh, how how do you do that uh, there's a one way to do is instead of all, always you uh, generate a trajectory for for those periodic motion right like a step in place or next like walking um, you can generate a transition trajectory <coughs> uh, let's say uh, you from this periodic orbits and then you did ask say hey this is my initial state this is my final state uh, can you do a trajectory in three step like a full step uh, to uh, find and th- this trajectory uh, once you have this uh, transition trajectory you can use this in a, a MPC fashion so so say like uh, that you know your this will be the target speed this will be your initial speed uh, then you, you can uh, do this um, and they can, can have a, a really a controller instead of this neutral stable it's really a stable controller uh, you can do that uh, i'm not sure this will extend this to every behavior because um, it's not this is a curse of dimensionality right we have the two variable but we have a different like the side to side motion then your library become uh, will grow uh, very large uh, so i think so we're still trying to keep the library uh, in low dimension uh, then we can use some model based control methods kind of like to to um, uh, uh, stabilize the uh, library or the library's real reference that so we can make some modification on, uh, on top of that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for yeah. the answer. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Anything else? Anyone? Yeah, control. Oh, OK, hands raised. Yeah, Karthik, uh, I think kindly, I think you can unmute yourself. Yeah. Yeah, uh, so basically uh, in your vision based locomotion project, uh-huh. I just wanted to know how the vision was integrated with the controls to work smoothly. Like you explained the controls part. Uh-huh. Can you explain yeah. how vision was integrated with the controls? Right. Uh, yeah, I, I can review more detail. Um, so we first have this height map. So uh, this is a simulation. So in the real robots, I just assume so we have a good um, stay estimator and this uh, point clouds around the robots uh, then we can build this high map the high map is basically 32 by 32 a grid uh, so there's a grid around the robots and they provide this uh, vertical height information uh, then we use that in the control decision uh, and we use this uh, in a very Control. So we say uh, we still use a reverse heuristics to do the full placement. Um, and the, 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 the green dot is the target location. Um, so the reverse heuristic can put the foot in those gap, right? Because it's just proportional to the velocity. Um, then we'll do a nearness neighbor search to find the nearest feasible location uh, on this stepping stone. Um, so so that, that, that's, uh, here, that, that's how I use uh, vision uh, in the control. So basically uh, by changing uh, the foot target location. And uh, uh, a more detailed trick is uh, it can oscillate, right? You can say, well, we have, have, um, uh, we have a gap and uh, the heuristics say I'm just in the middle of the gap. And if it's forward a little bit, it will be on front edge of the gap and they will be back a little bit, they will be the rear edge of the gap and then they can oscillate it. So then the, the target location just jump into two very different location and uh, your foot cannot keep track of it. So it just enter the gap <laughs> with large tracking error. Uh, we're trying to avoid that. We'll say, okay, uh, you are free to uh, change your location, but uh, while my foot is approaching to the landing phase, uh, 
you limited your decision for 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 this jump and uh, when approaching the the, the distance is a shrink uh, to zero so so you can jump a few times then just stay here or or you can move locally but but no no large jump uh, that that's that, that's how um we 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 do this um um for 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 location um um yeah and this, this is a heuristic and uh, learning maybe we can use it for more more different stuff uh, that's why i think the policy three uh, could be even better yeah okay great so okay uh, in the interest of time i think we are almost an hour mm -hmm. so there are any other uh, questions probably you can take it probably we'll make it last two questions probably dennis if that's okay with you mm -hmm. yeah yeah that's okay yeah any other questions guys okay okay uh, so one thing i'll just take the question then so uh -huh. one thing that was quite impressive was the emergent behaviors that you showed in this specific uh, like a go demo like uh, uh, you know, uh, given based on the nature of the terrain or the uh, uh, nature of the, you know, these changing terrains, it's automatically mm -hmm. coming up with energy efficient behaviors and right. more practical solutions, right? So mm -hmm. in this, I was just a bit curious on what kind of models you have in the low level QPMPC. Is it like a mm -hmm. potato model or a, 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 a single rigid body model? So and the second part of that question is how much of that modeling do you think is important since you have a model free high level planner? Uh, so yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, OK, so maybe this one uh, gives some uh, idea. Um, so the low level QP well, QP is say uh, you have or well, we put here you give a target acceleration. And so you have this um, point mass um, model uh, that you compute uh, the ground reaction force. Uh, so, so it's a very simple um, uh, strategy. So, so you have this QP uh, model and uh, you, you, you compute um, uh, the ground reaction force and then you use the Jacobian transpose to get to the motor torque. Um, yeah, that, 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 that's QP part. Um, well, and one, one thing maybe you're interested in is how we uh, generate the contact sequence, like how, how we learn those uh, generated sequence. Um, so you can think about each foot as a clock. Um, and the clock, you can cut it to half. So half of them are swing, half of them are stand. So this is like a clock face, um, the stand and the swing. Um, then we can define the clock speed. Uh, so how fast each one should run, and um, so so if it just a stop, then can like uh, in, in the stand space forever, and if it's a constant, so you will have the periodic motion, and if you have a different initial uh, um, point, then you will have different behavior, like you can have this hopping behavior, trotting behavior, it's like a 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0, 0, right, just like a two, two stands to swing. Uh, then, then you can have different behavior, even like the walking gait. Um, then the learning policy is just is to learn uh, the face speed. Um, so, so you would select a speed like a zero to three. Uh, so, so you can do complete stop, or but you can uh, move fast. Uh, but the point is, is monotonic increase. Uh, if you do like the hyper zero dynamic or those things, usually we're trying to have uh, the monotonic increase, so they so won't, won't go backwards. Um, then that you will coordinate, like uh, look at say uh, what the other foot is doing and uh, what I'm supposed to do. Um, so, so the policy will change the speed. Uh, so sometimes it's run very fast, uh, sometimes it just uh, stop. Um, and then, then uh, this way you can have all combination of uh, different uh, contact behavior. So you can change the contact sequence and uh, the frequency uh, the, the all are together. OK, perfect. Just a quick follow up is uh, so this is great and this is definitely working well in Lycago also as we saw, but uh -huh. uh, it's rigid model and everything. So fixing the QP part and the exact framework. So I know RL is working well in bipeds, right? Like yeah, uh, yeah. The balance and everything, yeah. but if you yeah. fix the same QP and the same framework, is it transferable to different morphologies, say bipeds or 
you know other side of like a robots uh, especially okay. bipeds mm-hmm. uh, i believe so i i, I think this morphology uh, will work uh, on the um, biped as well and uh, maybe not this instant qp maybe your mpc um because Quadruped, especially the trotting gait, is more like a fully actual system. Even kind of under actual, but really it's most actual system. Uh, so the QP is fine, uh, meaning it can find exactly the same the, the solution. Um, a bypass is like one leg, it's very under actual. So maybe you need the MPC or Horizon uh, that, 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 that will give a more stable uh, result. Uh, so, so I think this strategy totally applies so you just change the mpc qp to mpc and uh, a- a- everything apply and uh, yeah i'm eager to see how, how it works for say next if you can allow to change the contact sequence i don't think not, not, not many people do on the bypass to to have non-double support or just stand there and someone pushes then so you do a few steps forward I, I don't think anyone do that um yeah yeah Great. So, Karthik, I see that you are still your right hand rises, your hand is up. So, do you have a follow-up question or something? Okay. Uh, uh, no, that was from the previous time only. Sorry. Okay. No issues. So, we'll probably take one last question. Uh, anything, guys, from your side? Anyone? Okay. Looks like there's no question. So, let me take yeah. the final one as well. Uh-huh. So. Uh-huh. The final one would be the uh, something which is very interesting, Isaac uh, Jim. So yeah, I, yeah. I saw the uh, presentations, I saw the metrics. It's very, pretty fascinating. So yeah. I understood that the entire speed on the par- thing is from the parallelization in GPU. Right. Right. Uh, but uh, can you just quickly compare and contrast, you know, the contact accuracy or modeling? So if you see something oh. like a dark. Uh-huh. Or because it, it is pretty, uh, you know, well modeled and it takes a lot of time. It's not learning friendly. And at the other end of the spectrum, you have pi bullet, which is, uh-huh. you know, not very accurate per se, yeah, but yeah, it's yeah, yeah. very yeah. easy to work with. Uh-huh. And in between, recently we have Rizim, right? Uh-huh. Uh, which is which was also uh-huh. claiming to be quite speed due to the contact, uh, more uh, accurate contact modeling, which is uh-huh. I think similar. To yeah. Um, Can you give uh, a yeah, quick yeah, overview? Yeah. So, 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 so the, the Rizim and the Isaac Jim, uh, the model accuracy is almost the same. Uh, we can do uh, same to real transfer like a nerf from rising and uh, test it in Isaac Gen uh, with no no problem. So so accuracy wise is as the same. I would say this is probably the two most accurate model uh, versus Pi Bullets or the Mojoko. Uh, Mojoko I haven't used it, but I heard it's pretty hard unless you do a um, very precise uh, parameter tuning. Um, but for digits, well, because uh, agility they, they tune very well, so you may stay with that. Also, they have a very a lot of like a closed loops constraint. Um, like the Berkeley, uh, we have some, some, some students over there that trying trying to use uh, digits on either chain because of um, closed loop constraint uh, we currently not supported. Um, so so it'd be too hard. Uh, to to embed this on uh, Isaac Gen, um, yeah, that's the the limitation. And uh, if but for for Quadruped, if I if you ask me to recommend, uh, I may say you try uh, Rising first because uh, that's pretty mature and uh, free for academic uh, for industry. It actually costs a lot of money. Uh, Isaac Gen, if you wanna looking for the speed, that will be the only one work on the GPU, so, so this, this can be super fast. And I know many labs who use Ryzen before and looking for using the uh, Isaac Gen, uh, but still in the developing phase, something might not support. But definitely, this is the only one you can run or a full time in, in GPU. Uh, so this is very, very fast. Uh, Pi bullets, that, that, that's okay. Um, well, it has a lot of next like, example uh, Google Brain use and uh, Mojo, I think mostly because agility they use it. So, so any training on that uh, will stay with the Mojo. Um, yeah, for, for accuracy wise, uh, that's very good. Um, I just find, find, find one or two minor bug, um, something like that. Veloc- well, the position is very accurate, so velocity is not for the default 
solver type, but if you change this to uh, another type, um, it's, it's pretty good. It's exactly as you do the finite difference from the um, position. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, so I have no, ha haven't have any issue next uh, with, with this uh, simulator. It will not have those magic just robots flying out those uh, bug, <laughs> and that never happened. Yeah. Okay, great. Uh, just a quick follow up. Like, can you tell the va like you know a specific value? I I know it's subjective to the hardware resources and uh, like you know your framework and everything. But how fast were you able to train some of these policies in Isaac? Uh, Okay, I like Jen. So uh, I have the in house, they have the C interface. So that okay. really take like 20 minutes to train. I mean, to, to, to have this rework function just rise to a very reasonable point. I mean, I can let it train overnight. Maybe it's improved a little bit, but in general, 20 minutes um, is um, pretty good uh, for, for this, all of this result. Um, yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. That's fantastic. That's super fast, actually. Yeah, yeah, it's it's, it's fast. Uh, well, also this because the the, the uh, action dimension is very low, and uh, there's not 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 very uh, much the observation dimension also low. So so the, I I think that's why it's train fast. Uh, Got it. Yeah. Got it. Okay. So oh. there are no other questions. Uh, Probably we can conclude, I guess, then. Mm -hmm. So thanks a lot, Dennis. It was quite an impressive, interesting session. Uh, mm -hmm. To be very honest, uh, when people see legged like, robots nowadays, you know, dancing and everything, uh, they, 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 they often forget to realize, you know, this much work goes behind. You know, <laughs> yeah. uh, learning, they just see it's working and they feel, you know, robotics is done. Yeah. So this actually, your talk was uh, throwing light on some of the most important uh, aspects, you know, the mm -hmm. journey as such. So thanks a lot for your time yeah. and uh, yeah. So if we have any more doubts, probably our students will reach out to you. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Happy to, to answer any of the following question and uh, thanks for hosting this uh, meeting. Sure. Okay. See you guys then. I think yep. I'll stop the recording. Yeah. Thank you again. Yeah. See you. Yeah.